What's going on Babylonians? It's me, Songs of Rays, back with another Outriders World Slayer video to bring to you. And today we're actually going to be doing a small dive into all four of the armor builds that we've actually seen. One for every single one of the classes that are currently in Outriders. And we're actually going to have a quick look into why it's a positive thing and what this actually could mean for the other armor sets that we haven't actually seen just yet. Uh, because we were aware that there was a, a specific amount of new uh, legendary items that were going to be coming to the game. We were aware of so many armor sets that were going to be coming to the game. And this is just a small peek of that. So it'll be interesting to see how the next ones are actually going to happen or if they are obviously uh, when, when those will actually drop or if we're actually going to see those in the first place or if it's just going to be purely a mystery leading up to the DLC and it's something that we find out when we actually do get our hands on it. Before we get any further into the video make sure that you have dropped that like and the subscribe button it really does help the channel out and obviously every single bit of World Slayer news is going to be coming through our channel so make sure you're right here for the first part, first time right there. So uh, before any of you, without further ado let's get right into it. So before we get started, obviously we need to cover every single one of the builds, just like briefly in terms of like their set bonuses, uh, because let's be honest, in terms of like the actual mods that's currently on there, um, you know, while some of them are brand new and some of them do actually cater to the brand new playstyle, uh, so most of the times we will actually deal like go slightly different compared to what PCF will actually give us or where, what, what the Outrider socials will actually tell us in the build, and we'll probably make our own minds up when it comes to that kind of thing. So what we'll do is we'll touch on the, the brand new set, we'll touch on what's brand new mods, and then we'll move forward from there. So first up we had the Concussioner, and then the Concussioner was the melee focused Devastator that also came with uh, mods towards Reflect Bullets and to Golem. So Reflect Bullets allows it to be able to deal damage where enemies are close and it also allows to be able to block so much damage to be able to amplify and create a swirling disc around and then we also had some golem mods to be able to uh, have like uh, being able to inflict like a de like a debuff just for melee and we also had it so we had the uh, the, like, the golem that also launched out uh, and did 300% AOE damage. Now the, set, the, the concussionist set bonus was uh, by taking damage um, you're able to store up so much of that damage to be able to convert 80% of that into additional melee energy uh, so overall this was yeah, this was encouraging a melee kind of playstyle. So next up we had the uh, the trickster which was for the shield beast uh, set bonus which was every single percent of shield that you actually had on your person at that time increased your anomaly power by 1% and you're know, like equal to the amount of shield that you actually have compared to uh, your full uh, kind of capacity. So uh, if you had a full amount of shield and full, full health, health bar of shield then you had 100% of the uh, anomaly power boost uh, and obviously anywhere in between and all that kind of thing. Uh, in terms of like the uh, the new mods that we actually got to see this was purely for Venator's Knife which allowed us to be able to uh, spread it when we actually killed an enemy to uh, nearby enemies and then also on top of that we also were able to get uh, additional shield uh, orbs to be able to collect that to be able to boost our shield even further obviously feeding straight back into the set bonus. Uh, so this was purely a kind of like an anomaly power boost kind of side of things to be able to obviously boost that kind of side of that play style uh, but uh, so it was it was definitely a little bit different compared to that of Devastator because whereas the Devastator you were trying to take as much damage as possible this one you don't want to be taking as much damage to be able to keep that shield up as consistently as, as possible to be able to benefit from that additional anomaly power next up we had the Pyro which was the Scorched Zealot and the Zealot was, uh, well, it had the set bonus of melee skill, fires a projectile that explodes upon impact, dealing 1.1 million points of damage. Obviously, this is at level 75. Uh, so, obviously, and, uh, as you start scaling that up, obviously, it will will affect depending on, obviously, what level and what, what, what tier you are actually at. Uh, but it also uh, inflicts ash to enemies within a 5 meter radius. Damage of the projectile was increased by 25% per enemy that was hit with Feed the Flames. And this was up to 100% bonus that's spent on the next melee use. Uh, they also gave us uh, a couple of things for Heat Wave. Uh, and it also gave us uh, a couple of things for uh, Feed the Flames. So we had things like uh, being able to uh, like increase the actual damage that Feed the Flames actually did. And it gave us like a couple of bonuses to... Uh yeah, in the like heat wave. So you, if you, when you actually cast it out, you're able to get additional weapon damage from actually standing in the trail that it's just sent out. And we also had the heat wave come back as well. Uh, we did also get to see a couple of mods that suggested that we were going to get another another cast of heat wave and another cast of thermal bomb. Uh, but I don't think that kind of made it into uh, the build itself from uh, from memory. But uh, that those were something for us to be able to actually keep an eye out for. Uh, so this one was was kind of like testing a different type of melee uh, and actually incorporating it into a build that actually already does an omni skill, uh, an omni power, and uh, being able to actually inflict additional status. It's something that's like it's supposed to work in combination because the pyro isn't. While the pyro does have a heat wave that's kind of fairly short range, uh, they don't want to be uh, right up in their face or anything like that. So. 
Uh, th this is just purely a kind of like a mid-range melee ability, and it just kind of encourages this class to actually use their melee to be able to actually, you know, help out in terms of damage, help out in terms of status, and all that kind of thing. So it was a very, a very welcome change. Uh, but where, whether it's going to be uh, top tier or whether it's actually something that's going to be picked up is yet to be seen. And then that just leaves the last one, which was the Flame Leper, uh, which is for Technomancers. And the set bonus on this was inflicting toxic on an enemy three times, transformed that status into Blight Fire, which deals more damage over time. In terms of the uh, what we actually got to see on this, we actually got to see a couple of uh, additional mods that actually helped out with Fixing Wave as well as the, uh, the Blighted Turret. So the Blighted Turret was able to fire additional Nomni Beams uh, that dealt so much damage every 0.3 of a second up to five enemies within a five meter radius. So this helps out in terms of like AOE kind of taking down. Uh, we got to see uh, a change to Breathe In, which is kind of interesting because this now applies weakness to enemies that are within a 10 meter radius. We've got Party Starter, which increased the, uh, the, the overall effectiveness of Fixing Wave uh, and to be able to potentially go over into that overhealed kind of category, which we can actually go in the Pax Tree. Um, we've got Virulent Compound, which increased the amount of da da damage to enemies uh, to elites that are afflicted with Toxic, and also helped with uh, kind of exploding and spreading that status around. Um, we've also got uh, License to Heal, which was activating the skill of Fixing Wave, gaining a 10% weapon damage bonus and 4 seconds of infinite ammo. Uh, we also got Bad Medicine, Overhealed players inflict Toxic and deal for uh, so much damage for every percent of Overheal in a 10 meter radius. Uh, and the main one that really kind of like took me back was uh, Alchemical Mastery, uh, which was while the skill of Blighted Rounds was active, receive a weapon damage or an anomaly power bonus equal to 30% of your status power, and this is based on whichever is higher. Um, the other one was uh, was getting a tier 1 mod, which actually helped out Blighted Rounds, which reduces the skill's cooldown by 50%, which is kind of on the interesting side of things. Um, it's, it's almost like trying to take it back to default values, as, as to if you remember when Outriders first launched, and how Blighted Rounds actually was at that time being. It, it took a massive nerf in terms of its cooldown, uh, so now we actually have a tier 1 mod to potentially take it back to around about the same kind of level, uh, which is kind of nice to see, it actually gives you a little bit more kind of like, uh, it makes it a little bit more forgiving if you actually do choose to take that tier 1 mod, but obviously we all know that and we, we've already kind of like perfected the fact that uh, Blighted Rounds, we never want to be able to lose those, so uh, whether this will actually be picked up, I can, I can understand why it is a tier 1 mod. So we've been through all of these builds now, and obviously we've we've done like a full-on proper breakdown when we're in our own individual videos. So make sure you head over there if you actually want to know our personal opinions on these builds and these sets as to how they will actually affect the meta. Uh, but in terms of the uh, what what it's kind of promoting, and this is the key thing right here, is the fact that these sets are pretty different compared to everything that's already in the vanilla version of Outriders. So for example, for the flame level that we've just taken from this, uh, we don't have anything that's there to be able to increase damage over time or anything like that. It, it, damage over time is purely there to be able to afflict a status and then we use a multiplier to actually increase the amount of damage that we actually do. Whereas the Flame Leper is looking to be able to take that kind of aspect, that kind of philosophy and actually change it into a way that to be able to deal damage. So depending on the amount of damage that this Blight Fire, um, the status that can actually be, uh, can be applied, um, it's going to be interesting to see if this is actually going to be strong enough to actually obviously compete uh, with when we've got things like uh, Firepower Technomancers that are able to use Borealis. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, got, got, got a few others kind of like set pieces, like uh, the anomaly pieces and all that kind of thing. We don't have anything that increases status, um, and it looks like it's being able to take that and turn it into a brand new playstyle for this class. Uh, which is kind of, a, a, kind of well, quite exciting to be fair. And uh, the same with the Devastator. Now, the Devastator, you can actually get away with doing a melee build as it currently stands in the game. Uh, we've actually done it before on the on the uh, on the channel already. Um, so make sure you actually have a look out for that. We actually compared Seismic against Marshall. Um, but um, the fact that we're now getting a dedicated set bonus to be able to actually do melee damage is absolutely amazing. And I'm, I, for one, am very looking forward to actually using that. Now, is it going to be competitively viable? Once again, that is yet to be seen. I can't imagine it's going to be over taking that of like the seismic commander when we can actually use proper skills rather than just a melee but it's going to be fun and that's the that's the key thing that we actually have to take away from this we can't be comparing all of these set bonuses to the current meta we can't be comparing it to what is the strongest build to actually go into it because while some people do actually find that to be fun and you know i'll hold my hands up and i'll quite happily say that that's the case for myself and um, you know there's some times where you actually just want to play something a little bit different you want to play a different kind of build you want to play you want to test out a few different functions that actually exist in this game and what you can do is take something like the flame leper and just try, try out a damage over time build you can take the the, the concussioners you can try out a melee build with the devastator you know there's so many different things 
things to be able to mix it up with and that, that, that's the thing that I, I, and that's what I'm loving that they're trying to promote those kind of play styles in this game so we're not just fixated we're not just stuck in the same old bear builds that we've actually known and known and loved for the last year or so uh, when it comes to your, the vanilla Outriders experience. Now, as I said, this is just purely one set that we've seen for each of the classes that's actually come out. And I do believe there are going to be more that are actually going to be inside the game when it comes to launch. So whether we're actually going to see those beforehand or whether we're not is uh, yet to be seen. Uh, but what we'll actually do is we'll keep uh, keep posted. We'll keep an eye out on the socials. If anything actually does pop up, that's going to be the best place to be able to look out for. And then we'll do a video breakdown to be able to actually go through uh, how viable it is, what kind of, what's kind of unique about it, and our personal views and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to put it to you as the comment section, so let me know in the comment section down below uh, to be able to say what what kind of build would you actually like to be able to do. If you had freedom to be able to actually go into this and take your main character, so whether it be a Techno, whether it be a Pyro, whether it be a Trickster, whether it be a Devastator, what kind of set bonus would you actually design yourself for? What skill would you actually take and actually make some brand new tier 3 mods to be able to actually make it a little bit more viable? I'd love to actually hear your thoughts in the comment section down below, but let's just keep uh, just remind ourselves that there are actually going to be potentially some new legendaries, some new tier 3 mods that are actually going to be coming our way uh, so we best keep our eyes peeled over on the socials and once again as soon as, as soon as that actually gets announced over there damn right we will be covering that straight on this channel so make sure you keep your eyes peeled over here that just wraps up the, the, the video and wraps up what, the, why I'm so excited for what this uh, these new builds. Even though they may not be the best builds out there currently, uh, and they may not be the best set bonuses to actually like make their way into the game, um, I do. I, I, it still excites me for the fact that we are having brand new playstyles kind of like uh, presented to ourselves by. Uh, the developer team and PCF and Square Enix and all that kind of thing to be able to enjoy uh, Vanilla Outriders as well as World Slayer Outriders as well and depending on the content that actually gets thrown at us it just opens up more tools it opens up more variety and I'm for one I'm very excited for that that pretty much wraps up the video thank you so much for making your way to the end uh, make sure you have dropped a like and subscribe it really does help the channel out as always thank you so much to the Babylonian family as always for their continued support it really does help us out and that just leaves me to say keep yourself safe keep yourselves well and I'll see you all on our next video.